So when you're working with a lot of color and you're working with a lot of squares, you always end up with a lot of ends. But if you work them in as you go, not so many ends. Hey everyone, Jane here back with the second video in this three part series of working in our ends as we go. My goal here is to make crochet color work a whole lot more fun. If you missed the first one, you can find the link below or I'll link to it up in the corner. So this video is going to follow round two of the mandala square. We're going to work in our ends. Let's get going. Before we proceed on to round two, we've decided in this particular tutorial, I'm going to show you how to continue to work the center into round two. And in order to do that, we want to take this end and get it closer to the hook. So before we complete our last double crochet, if you recall in round one, we needed a chain three and 15 more double crochets. So I've stopped short of one double crochet here and I'm going to work my last double crochet and we're going to work this end up into it. So we're going to wrap the yarn around, go into our center, pull up a loop. So we have two loops on the hook, pull through two loops. Now on our final two loops, we're going to take that end that we had worked in to the first round and we're going to cross it over top of our working yarn. So we're actually going to pull it up towards our hook and you can hold it in place with your finger. So now your working end is underneath that strand. So see if you can see it there at the back. And now I will go ahead and complete the double crochet. And now you can see that the working end has worked the cut end up to the hook. So I'm just going to do an invisible join here and I'll come back and we'll start into the round two. So I've gone ahead and done an invisible join and you can see the two ends now. I've gone ahead and cut the yarn from round one and this shorter one is the one from the center. They are both in the same location ready to be worked in when I come to them. Now I've done the invisible join so that I can start somewhere else on my round. So now what I want to do is go back maybe a third of the round, not a full half, but just a third and start round two here so that I can work in the new color before I get to these. You can work more than one end in at a time, but just for this tutorial's sake, I want to be able to show you round two working the end in before we get to this point where we start working these ends in. So we'll join our new yarn, like I said, about a third of the way back on our round and leaving our end about four inches. Leaving more is better simply because you can cut it off. If you leave too short, you may wish that you had a little more. So we're going to pull up a loop and this round is going to be single crochet chain ones all the way around. So we're going to start our single crochet. So when we go in to do our single crochet, our first one, we want that end over top of our hook, which is the way that we did it in the last one. So go ahead and finish your single crochet and you've anchored the end at the back. So now we want to do a chain one. Chain ones aren't a large space, so it is okay if you just want to hold the yarn at the back and work over it for the stitches. It will show a little bit in your chain one, but not too much. But I'm going to show you how to wrap it right into the stitches so it's good and secure and it doesn't show at all. So before we do our chain one, we're going to take that cut end and we're going to toss it up again to the top part of the hook, holding it in place with our finger that we're holding the hook with, picking up our working yarn. So now they are crossed over at the back. You can see it there. And you're going to go ahead and chain one. The next thing you'll do is take the cut yarn and bring it to the front, crossing over the yarn as well. And then we're going to go into the next stitch. So we put our hook into the next stitch and see how it's just lying across the hook anyways, by the way that we're holding it, go underneath it, pull up a loop and complete your single crochet. And then just give that a, a light tug. You don't want to pull too tight. As you're working in your ends, you don't want to pull too tight on them because they will pucker your work. So we work that into the first two stitches. The next one is a chain one. So again, we take the yarn and throw it back up to the top, hold onto it with your finger. So it crosses over your working yarn. Then you want to go ahead and chain one and then you want to bring it back down across in front of your yarn and holding it in place. You're going to go into the next stitch. So you're holding it with your opposite hand to your hook and you're going to go ahead and 
to the stitch so you're going underneath the yarn, pulling up a loop, and finishing your single crochet. So ultimately what you've done here is you've anchored it in the first stitch, up into the chain, down into the next single crochet, up into the chain, and down into the next single crochet. And that's how we're working it in. So this way is almost better than darning them in, in the sense that you're working it right into your work. It's worked into the weaving of the stitches themselves. So it's good and secure. So I'm gonna go ahead and continue that until we get to these two strands here. So I worked my way over going up into the chain and down into the single crochet, and I've reached the point at which my two blue are ready to be worked in. Now I'm gonna go back and see, I've worked that white in all the way around here. So I can continue to do that, or I can choose to cut it. So I'm gonna go ahead and cut it. When you're working them in with your stitching, they're a lot more secure than if you were just to darn them around. So feel that working them in, you don't have to have the same length necessarily because you're almost like knotting it into the work. So it's a good idea also to cut them when you know you're finished, because if you go back later and you don't know whether you actually worked that end in or left it to be darned in later, you don't want to be cutting ends that have not been darned in at all. So now we've got these two blue. One is from the center, so we're continuing to work it in, and the other one is from the first round, and it's the first time it'll be worked in. So these ones are fairly simple. You're just going to hold them at the back of the work. Because they're the same color as the round below, they're going to blend in nicely. So we're going to go ahead and chain one, and then we're going to go into the next stitch for a single crochet and lie them both over top of the hook. And then you're going to complete the single crochet. And then again, chain one and go back into the stitch, having them both lie over top and complete the single crochet. So these ones don't get worked up into the chain stitches as they're a different colored yarn and they would show. So I've done that a few more times here, and you can see that I'm pretty much at the end of the one from the beginning. So that's okay, I can leave that one now, and I can continue on with the one from round one. So I'm going to go ahead and just work in this single yarn, and I'm going to work it around until I come to the end of round two. So I've completed round two, and now we're going to look at the back. So here we have what's left of round one, and I'm going to go ahead and trim that. We've worked it in pretty much from over here. So that's a pretty good distance for it. So we're going to go ahead and cut that. And we're finished with round two, so I'm also going to cut that one. Again, four to five inches, so you have something to work with on the next round. I'm going to pull it through and take a look at the back. So you can see now that we've been working our ends in and it's nice and clean back here. We have a little bit of a nub here and you can leave those and, and trim them at the end because as you work the yarn, they'll start to fray. You want to give them a little bit of room to work back into your work itself, or you can just trim them off at the very end and they'll disappear into your work. And there you go. That's the end of round two with all your ends worked in, and we're going to work this end in in the next round. Thanks so much for joining me in this tutorial, and you can join me again in the third and last video of this series, where I'll share with you how we work an end in over a double crochet shell stitch pattern, as well as having another color in play. See you there! If you're enjoying this series, please be sure to hit the like button and the subscribe button, and that way you won't miss out on any future tutorials. Thanks again!